windows are uh, probably one of the most uh, interesting uh, aspects of historic preservation. There's a tremendous amount of attention uh, being given to windows. Uh, the National Register of Historic Places, uh, the Secretary of Interior's um, standards uh, both suggest that windows are uh, a central and crucial element. You start changing windows and you won't make it on the National Register. Uh, or um, if you uh, aren't careful, uh, the first thing uh, that you can do to destroy the integrity of the house uh, is by changing its openings. And uh, that means essentially windows and doors. So we come to a, a very essential element here uh, in uh, any historic home. As I pointed out to you uh, earlier, um, in the 19th century, uh, these openings are very calculated to the style uh, in a pre-electric era to bring light into the house and, they, and to move light around. So they're integral to uh, the interior arrangement of the house. They're not simply randomly placed for uh, apparent no reason. Uh, in, and, and each style has a way of working with, uh, with its openings to facilitate the lifestyle with the, within the house. Uh, the, uh, and the, in painting houses, uh, in Mount Vernon particularly, um, we, are, we don't have the great high Victorian styles of uh, San Francisco. I've often said to myself, I think uh, the painted ladies have done us a great injustice because they wanted everybody to look like San Francisco. Uh, and Mount Vernon has never been like San Francisco, uh, and hopefully it won't be. Uh, the exuberance uh, and the pastel colors that come out of the Western um, sort of San Francisco style of Victorian painting uh, are somehow not appropriate in the subdued Midwest. Look at any of the styles, and you'll find that they're restrained when they get to Iowa. It's that good Methodist Presbyterian, Calvinist, restraining, uh, thrifty uh, kind of mentality. You don't get carried overboard uh, and in anything. But one thing you don't uh, want to do in uh, a house, in some sense, is um, to uh, paint it to where it has an exuberance that doesn't belong to a restrained style. Uh, and in one of our workshops uh, several years ago, I thought someone made a very good point saying, in most of our structures in Mount Vernon, you put more than three colors on and you're really screwing things up. Uh, three colors are plenty uh, in, the, in most of the homes uh, in town. There could be some exceptions. Well, but windows are a central part of that. As you start thinking about accentuating the charm of a home uh, as you, in, by painting architectural detail, you're certainly going to find that windows are some of the most interesting uh, offer, offer, uh, the most interesting opportunities for accentuating the charm of a house. So we're back to windows. Um, <clears throat> the there are all kinds of in, because of the crucial nature of windows and openings in historic structures. There's all kinds of information uh, available. Um, <clears throat> there's um, the uh, again Old House Journal uh, has a, 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 an excellent uh, index of all of each, each of the issues of um, Old House Journal over the last 15 years that have anything to do with windows are on this sheet, and they're, uh, they're rather uh, extensive. The uh, State Historical Society uh, Historic Preservation Bureau has put out uh, a special sort of packet of material on uh, windows. And uh, they uh, start out saying, um, what about old windows? Does this seem familiar? And then they go through a list. The window looks awful and the glass is broken or missing. The paint is peeling on frames and window sash. The sash joints are loose and the wood is rotten. Some of the sash pieces have fallen out or are missing. And they go down the list and anybody who's uh, old and owned home was going to say, yeah, I got at least one of those. Uh, and maybe I got a whole house full. <clears throat> but um, one of the uh, prime concerns for the Secretary of Interior's uh, standards in dealing with historic structures is to try to keep existing material as long as possible using the natural ma the material that the original material is uh, is where the priority is uh, and there are all kinds of new uh, plastics and epoxies that are available for working with windows and, and these handouts 
um, I would be glad to, to let you uh, take a look at them. This liquid epoxies uh, can, uh, can, be, um, can really be quite effective uh, in repair of rotten wood, uh, and they're fairly inexpensive, and they're not too hard to deal with. Uh, again, uh, like most everybody on the Preservation Commission, uh, I've been involved in the restoration of at least two or three houses, uh, and in my own where I've had to do all my own work, uh, in my own painting, uh, I understand uh, from some first-hand experience that uh, working with windows is, is a problem. When you pull them out, you find golf balls and walnuts, as Ed was saying, on one side. Uh, or you thought you insulated the house when you blew uh, insulation into it and it didn't get into the cracks around the windows. Um, you know, all kinds of surprises when you take a window out uh, to examine it's, uh, where the air leaks may be or to rebuild it. Uh, in any case, um, <clears throat> there are all kinds of new materials available, including uh, all, uh, new types of uh, window stripping, uh, and as was pointed out here, even uh, a re the replacement windows, we're going to hear more about that uh, as, uh, as well. Uh, so there are lots of options. Uh, the options are, of course, to rebuild, retain as much of the original material as possible. Then if that uh, isn't going to satisfy or is a problem, then you can look at uh, replacement windows as commercially available. Uh, and there's another option, which is, in some sense, custom windows, which uh, a number of uh, fine uh, millwork organizations are involved in. Uh, I've done all three of those. Uh, and uh, the, um, the custom windows that were, were done for my home are absolutely wonderful. They also set me back a heck of a lot of money. Uh, but they, they were really well done. I mean, they, they were designed for that house. They fit. They were wood. Uh, and some of the problems I found with replacement windows uh, simply weren't there. Uh, on the other side of, of all this, um, the National Register and uh, Secretary of Interior uh, Standards talk about, well, look, your house is 100 years old. Um, now, you're going to tear that window out just because it's old. Uh, think about that. Is the next window you put in going to last 100 years? So w in some sense, think about um, the age and character of the, uh, the opening itself um, before you jump, simply for convenience. Uh, now, there, uh, we haven't had um, a number of these uh, really high-quality replacement or uh, design windows for very long. Uh, it's interesting to me, I was um, fascinated uh, by a, a seminar I went to where, uh, on windows where I was told for the first time, and I, I don't know how many windows I worked on in that house, but there's a, a heartwood is used for uh, the window casings in these old houses. And it, it, it's the best part of the wood. Uh, and it, it is suddenly, you know, you say to yourself, yeah, no one of these things have lasted 100 years. They use some of the best quality wood uh, in these windows. They knew the problem. It wasn't that they, they didn't know that windows were going to rot. So um, you have lots of choices and lots of decisions. And uh, we'll be happy to... Uh, have some of the contractors uh, and others comment about this uh, as we go along, but um, I did want to, uh, I had the opportunity to, to invite um, <clears throat> Mr. Novi, who's uh, with Pella Windows, uh, to come and talk about uh, replacement and, uh, in some sense, um, design windows, uh, and what's happening with uh, this whole notion of historic windows. Uh, if he's not here to talk just about windows, they're going to talk primarily about uh, restoration windows or historic windows. But uh, Mr. Novi is uh, brought with him uh, one of his trusted associates, uh, and uh, we're, uh, I think we should give them some time to, to tell us about what's really going on in the industry uh, if you are going to have to go to a replacement or rebuilding character. So, Mr. Novi, you want to say just a word or two and make an invitation? Well, I'd like to start off by uh, uh, 
getting into a little bit of my own experience, um, I live in a neighborhood in Iowa City that is going to be put on the historic registry within the next year, year or so. So I'm starting to, uh, to look at my house in a little bit different perspective from that, the historic angle and, and what things I can do to, uh, to the house and, and maintain its integrity. Um, one of the things that Pella provides as far as, as replacement of windows um, is something that, that no other wood window company on the market can provide for you. It's what we call our precision fit. It's got an all wood interior and either a wood or aluminum clad exterior. Insulated glass and this is all packaged in a frame just like you see here. It has a protruded fiberglass frame, which means that it can be stained or painted to match what you have there. Um, the really nice thing about this product is that each of these units is pressure tested when it comes from the factory, so that you know you're not gonna have any air leaks or, um, or water infiltration. So many times when sash replacement kits are used, the air infiltration rating and the water infiltration rating on that window depends exclusively on how square the existing opening is. With this, there's no standard sizes. Each of these units is built to within a half an inch of your existing opening, fits exactly in. You measure to make sure that uh, the unit is placed in square, shim it, caulked from the exterior, and stopped in with your original sash stop. Um, it also, uh, just as a as a, a benefit for for down the road, it does tilt for easy cleaning, um, and really can can increase the efficiency of your home. One of the other benefits that uh, that Pella offers with this product is our Architect Series window, which is is what you see here. It's available as two different product lines, as the full Architect series, where it has the mutton bar that's permanently attached to the insulated glass, both on the interior and the exterior. And it would be either clad or wood, depending on the, the type of window that you've purchased. One of the other things that Pella does that's a little different is we put a gray foam spacer in between the interior and the exterior mutton bar. So when you look at that mutton bar, it tricks the eye into believing that it's actually true divided light. When you're actually, you're, but you're picking up the efficiency of insulated glass, and you don't have to worry about individual insulated glass failure. Um, these Architect Series mutton bars come in uh, uh, a standard, equal divided lights, a prairie style, uh, which uh, California prairie style, which is a 14 pane prairie or the more traditional Midwest nine pane prairie. Or we can do custom in any design that, uh, that your house might have so that we can match to what's existing and, uh, and really give the, the impression that nothing has been done to this house. Um, so that's about... Uh, about all I've got as far as for the, uh, the replacement sash windows. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Fred now, and he's gonna give some examples of some actual historic restorations that Pella has done um, using either the precision fit or a full replacement unit that, uh, I should say it, that this also can be done as a uh, full replacement where the actual window is, is completely removed, and then we can match exterior brick molds and uh, and actually replace the entire unit and go to a completely wood product and uh, with all the custom buttons and, and everything so that it can match your home. So thanks, Fred. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure how many people here are familiar with Pella. Have you, you know, you see a show of hands who knows about Pella at all? Oh, good. For those of you that don't, a quick history. Pella has been around since 1925 when they came out with this thing called Roll Screen. It was their very first product that they ever made. Still make it today. Uh, back in the early, early 60s and 70s, they began to become involved in commercial applications. 
So what I'd like to do today, I'm going to pass out a couple of these commercial books through the, through the crowd here. And if you just take a look at some of the projects in here, I'm going to go over some of them briefly, but Pella prides itself on being able to partner with architects, contractors, the Preservation Society. And uh, if you just want to leaf through those as I'm talking, you might, especially at the very first part of that, what we have uh, accomplished over the years is working closely with the historic boards, the registrations, and that's not an easy task if any of you have ever talked to any of the boards where what uh, Dick talked about earlier was if we're not going to allow you to restore the window to its original condition, we're going to change it or we're going to replace it. That replacement usually involved taking a, uh, a window that had single pane glass as well as a mutton bar that Alex was talking about where we had four different panes of glass here instead of one big piece with this attached to it. If we got over that hurdle, we were able to usually uh, provide the application for the project with either the architect series window, which becomes the most prominent in most of our historic replications. Uh, and to do that, we did it a number of ways. We either did this window here, or we would take a uh, external mutton bar that would be attached to a to aluminum clad or wood clad uh, double hung that would, uh, if they would allow us to do that, that's what we would use. Now, we've, Pella has been involved with some of the largest projects in the country. The Willard Hotel back in, in Washington, D.C. Was, was, I think, the most prominent. The double hung windows in that building are six feet wide and 12 feet tall. I mean, that is a, a phenomenal size of window. We don't make that window anymore. It was called, it was called it was a monumental window, and it was the only time I think that was ever produced. We do, however, make still and, and, and still a manufacture a window that is five feet wide and 10 feet tall, and it really does cover most of the historic applications of the late 1860s up until the late 1920s and 30s when there was all these grand buildings that had, again, very large windows for, for light to shine through on. We have been through a number of different projects across the country, again, that the forestry people are monitor very, very closely. And if anybody's been through that, that is the most tedious group to ever get anything passed through. Uh, one of the big projects that Tell has done is at downtown Chicago, um, high rises, the old buildings down there. Uh, we Sometimes we get them and sometimes we don't. Uh, we work closely with the, the boards and it depends on the I guess it depends on the board itself they seem to be all on an individual basis as what they will and won't allow we worked very closely with uh, Brown Healy Stone and Sawyer last year on Osada or Osada and we lost that project because we couldn't replicate a large metal window or large factory windows we came we worked on it for over a year and came this close to getting it but the Hope Steel people finally came through with a window that was more um, associated and more applicable in that, in that situation. Right now, one of the big projects that I'm working on that I really have a lot of pride in is Bruce Moore. We're just in the process of going to bid Monday to redo the visitor center there. And I don't know if all, anyone's familiar with Bruce Moore, but it's, it's quite a facility. And uh, our first initial plan is to restore the windows. They're in such bad shape. We've now moved to the second phase, which is either true divided light windows which are finished white on the interior and the exterior, or to go to a simulated divide light, which will be this window here. Um, I don't, the, the, the projects that are floating around in that commercial catalog include such things as Cat Hall at Ames. And if they did something very interesting there, so just to give you people some ideas, instead of making the, all the windows wood and then having to go back and constantly maintain those with paint, the Cat Hall people, through working with the architects and the board, use the bottom floor of the windows are all wood, but the floors above that, second, third, and fourth, are all clad. And they were allowed to get that through the board. They accepted that change because they knew that painting 500 windows is one thing, painting 20 around the first floor is another. We have worked very, very closely with the University of Iowa people trying to do that same thing, but to no avail. What is wood at the University of Iowa will remain wood, and what is metal will remain metal, and never shall the two meet, unfortunately. 
Uh, last year I was involved, or two years ago, I was involved in McBride Hall where we lost a large job to Marvin Windows because we were a little bit high in the, in the bidding process. And again, we had to maintain a very, very, very strict historical correctness for that building. So there is, there, there are ways around, uh, I don't want to say we're trying to bypass the historic preservation boards, but depending on how you approach them and depending on on uh, the product that we're involved with, we sometimes allow ourselves to have those, we allow those changes to occur so that the homeowner or the owner of the college is happy as well as the, uh, uh, the contractor and hopefully the architect because uh, there's a very partnered, close relationship between working with the architects, the contractors, and the owners of these buildings. Um, I just found out from Greg Johnson, wherever he's at, that uh, all of Cornell is on the Historic National Registry, which is an amazing thing if you think about it. If you walk around the buildings at all there and you see some of the large double hung, they're all in pretty good shape yet, but as that comes time to replace them, Pella will no doubt be very, very much involved in the selection of the window as well as the specifications. Uh, back at the Pella plant in Pella, Iowa, we have about 3,500 employees. We also have a plant in Shenandoah that does nothing but custom products, and a lot of the windows you see in that catalog has to do with custom products. Um, we also have a plant in Story City. We have a plant in uh, Carroll, Iowa, and now we also have a, a new storm door plant that we just purchased up in Storm Lake. So, so it's a very, 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 very uh, diversified company. The things that they do, they make changes very slowly. But they do pride themselves on what we're talking about today, and that's historic replication of buildings without losing any of the, of the, uh, the character of the building. Uh, the one thing that we don't do anymore is true divided light, and it's because those of you contractors out there know true divided light is a headache. I mean, it, it, it's virtually impossible to seal every one of those individual panes of glass. So Pella's approach is what Alex talked about before, is architect series like uh, Mutton's pattern where the the appearance is to be true divided light and I think we probably have, have done the best job of that compared to anybody else in the industry. Uh, it looks good, it, uh, it holds up over time and it still maintains that authenticity that we're after. Um, we do a lot of work with school systems too and a lot of those, a lot of the schools have and they've come to the conclusion that the school's in, in bad repair, but in order to replicate what it was previously would take a lot of money. So we've even taken some, uh, we do what we call a slim shade here, where there's a blind, a mini blind behind the glass. I don't know if any of you are familiar with this. We've been making this for about 40 years now. But then we take this uh, mutton bar and attach it to the front of this thing so we get the appearance of the old historical accuracy but it's also very efficient and by doing that it allows us a lot more leeway to get into the to, to have the school board pass that 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 particular type of window replacement to make everybody happy so uh, I think that's about all I have if you guys have questions we're here to entertain anything you want by the way if there's architects here that I haven't met I have a full set of design manual the brand new architectural design manual. Um, it has all of our product in it, including commercial applications. On the front of it, it has a free CD. If you guys all have CAD programs, you can order this free, pop it into your machine, and you can uh, drop and drag all of the products that we have into your drawing, provided you get them passed by the historical board. <laughs> OK. OK? All right, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right. You have a yeah, any questions? Yes, go ahead. Replace the whole sash. Yep. I'm sorry. If we uh, if we'd use uh, tempered or laminated glass, we can withstand a lot of that. But uh, we found it's just better to replace the sash in about two weeks. Depends on it. Depends on uh, on the product. If it's Architect Series, we try to get that stuff out fairly quickly. The one thing about Smart Sash too, though, by the way, if if you do, if you don't use this, and we're going to a, we have this removable panel on an equal sash double hung, if somebody throws a baseball or a snowball through the bottom sash, 
you can take that top panel and put it in the bottom and close up the window so you don't have to put cardboard or or uh, plywood up to it so uh, as long as that's a double hung or even a casement window if you have removable panels that you have extra of you can replace those that way Donna you have a question oh way in the back there yeah and have there been studies conducted I'm sure there have been that show efficiency rates between the old traditional windows that have to have the well for the waste as opposed to the new windows? Uh, yeah, you're, I've got some information there. There, of course. Alex might be able to answer that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the old single pane glass, who's going to get a little bit technical here, has about a, a, a total unit R value of about 0.5 versus insulated glass, which has a total unit R value of 1. And then the new high-performance insulated glasses, uh, they have low-E coatings, uh, argon-filled. Um, with those, you're seeing uh, total unit R values as high as uh, 3.5. So in those respects, I mean, as far as the, the actual heat and cold that will pass through that window, um, you know, that's pretty hard to make single-pane glass perform like insulated glass. Um, as far as air infiltration goes, uh, if you're just going to replace the sashes and, and you go, go to a millwork and have you know, single pane sashes made for your, for your home, that all goes back to how, how square your opening is to start with as to how well those, those sashes will seal up. There's a lot that can be done with weather stripping and, uh, and all that, but uh, you're still not going to be able to meet the uh, performance ratings of uh, of a full replacement like the precision well, or the true, the true restoration um, I mean, Bruce was a good example of this when I talked to Peggy about the, the main house she said there will never be any replacement windows in that place they will continue to refurbish as Dick said uh -huh. and why not the windows are in fairly good shape now they have a storm panel on the outside so, you know, in terms of energy efficiency, with, with Alex said, if you, if you add weather strip to that situation, you've probably got a window that's going to be, you know, lasting for another 100 years. But for most of the, uh, the applications and the positions that you folks are in, or the colleges or the schools, we need to be very concerned about energy efficiency. You know, you can't just put a single pane glass of window back in there and expect it to do what these new windows do with uh, the low E coatings we have, the argon gas filled centers. Um, I, if you look at the performance characteristics of some of our new windows, when you add the slim shade blind to that, you can get almost an R value of six, which is unheard of in the industry. We also have a 20-year warranty on the insulating glass, and sometimes have a 20-year warranty if it's available, through, uh, depending on what we're doing on the window itself. That removable panel on the back part, that storm panel, carries a 30-year warranty. So. Pell is very dedicated to making sure if we're going to replace something, it's going to be a step up, not just you know, the, the norm for the run of the mill window. Um, and if you look, um, if you're concerned, sir, in the back, I have a whole, there's a whole chart on this ADM that, that goes through single pane glass all the way to triple pane glass and what those energy numbers do. So if you want to take a look at that, it will give you some idea about the, the differences. Any other uh, immediate questions here? I do want to say a couple words about doors, but... Go ahead. No, no. We only do metal clad or wood. Telesteel builds an all wood window as an option. That's what we're doing at Bruce Moore. Wood, mm -hmm. mutton bark. We also build a metal clad window, and that's a roll form cladding. It's a metal. Comes in these colors. Pass this around too. If you're looking at different colors, you mentioned color earlier. Oh. These are some of the colors that Pella has available, as well as an entire array of custom colors. You send us the chip off your house, and Pella will build that color specific to that class. Okay, but so, my question goes on to what are the different properties or factors of, of quality for insulating or whatever, or expansion, or whatever, for that type of window versus a vinyl, or an all vinyl, or a vinyl coated? Or I mean, I know there's different things out there. What do you think yeah, is the quality of yours? Pella has resisted vinyl application because of its longevity. It doesn't, it's still, we, we haven't figured out a vinyl that we feel comfortable with that will withstand ultraviolet, cold, and heat changes. 
So our, our roll form cladding is basically a watershed. It's to make sure that the, w behind the window, the preserved wood window that's behind that, which is made out of clear pine, will withstand over the years. The other thing is, oh, I think we can answer the question a little more. The, the vinyl expands and contracts at a much faster rate than glass does, um, cause, leaving you open for, for seal failure and for, for air and water infiltration. Aluminum and wood have virtually the same expansion and contraction rate as glass. So you've got a much, much better seal. And that's why old wood windows last so long. And those, those panes of glass will stay relatively sealed, well sealed for, uh, for a long period of time. Because that wood has, has about the same expansion and contraction rate as glass. So the, uh, the, uh, part of the objection uh, of the National Register people has been to vinyl has been at this very point that um, the expansion contraction rates and, and the life expectancy of vinyl, despite how nice it looks, is really pretty, uh, compared to a 100-year window, uh, is really inadequate. So that's, that is a problem, no doubt about it. We're going to have to move on here. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. The, um, uh, the competitors have already been mentioned here very nicely uh, by our own Iowa firm of Pella. Uh, but the, uh, another uh, very popular national brand is Anderson Windows. You'll find some contractors that are, uh, are more partial to uh, one brand or another because of their experience, uh, either in installation or in longevity, um, or maybe they're being bought off. Who knows? Um, but uh, there's another uh, fine uh, window company that, uh, that I've used as well, and that's uh, Marvin. Uh, they're uh, out of Minneapolis, I think, aren't they, Ed? Isn't Marvin? Where? Oh, well, it's Minnesota. Okay, they're they're Minnesota, and I think uh, Anderson's in in Wisconsin. Anyway, they're all uh, they're all uh, products that uh, you will see advertised. Uh, and as I say, if any of you are really uh, got window problems, please, we have enormous amounts of material here that we'd be glad to share with you. Um, the uh, the other topic here that we were talking about was uh, was to be doors, and on page 28 of the, the little book we have some do's and don'ts on doors. Um, the uh, there seems to be a temptation uh, with these nice large openings that uh, in the uh, the 19th century or 20th century buildings in Mount Vernon to fill them with a different type of door. We have big, as you'll notice here on page uh, the 28. Um, the uh, not recommended, but you'll often have a big oval door. Uh, they're not used very often in this in this part of the United States. Most of them are going to be uh, doors that are going to have uh, large large uh, glass tops and then panels of some kind, uh, decorative panels uh, in the lower parts of the doors. Uh, again, door um, replacement should be considered. Uh, I think uh, only as a, a last uh, ditch effort in most of these homes, uh, you can rebuild a lot of door uh, for, uh, and the, the problem most people get into are sprung doors. Someplace through the years they've, they've warped and they don't, uh, you know, they don't nicely uh, shut so that there's a, there's air leak. And especially if your door opens on the north side of the house, um, you know, you really get it. Uh, but that, uh, you know, again, those things can be cured, uh, but be very careful in terms of door replacements. And if the, uh, again, uh, some of these uh, millwork, uh, quality millwork places can, can manufacture doors for you. Uh, and I've even seen uh, a, a craftsman in the area who's, uh, we've cut a door in half. And they replaced half the door. Uh, it had to be painted, but it's, it's the, essentially uh, the lower part of the door was so badly uh, deteriorated that they simply cut it off and replicated uh, the panel, the rest of the panel, and it's beautiful. You can't tell it from uh, from the original. The upper part of the door, with where most of its charm is, uh, in, in the decoration around the window and the, the swags and that kind of stuff, is, are uh, it can be uh, fabricated. Um, we've um, and, uh, and again closing uh, like windows. Uh, leave those openings. Uh, the size that they are. Work with that size. Don't start to, again, you know, it's a temptation in the 70s, as Leo was saying uh, earlier today, to the energy crisis, let's pull those windows down, put smaller windows in. Uh, in historic homes, they really have an enormous impact on the, uh, the visual character and integrity of the house. 
and doors uh, do as well. Um, okay, we got some questions. We want to try to stay on time. I don't want to cut anybody off. Yes. Uh, the best thing to do with those, and um, I, I've got two answers because I've tried two things. Um, one was to find a fabricated door that at least uh, left the, the uh, something like this one, that in other words leaves the, the main pane, of the, the, the real charm of the door available uh, from visually from the street without, um, you know, the, uh, without all of, doesn't com the two doors don't compete. A lot of times these wide open uh, doors are not, people don't like them because they're not firm enough. Uh, the glass in them, you know, they, they, they feel like it, it's, they're, they're, just, they're just too flexible. They don't give a sturdy, sturdy feeling. Um, but I think if you can retain uh, the visual character of the door uh, itself, that is the, the inner door, um, stay with that. I've also had a, a, a storm door manufactured uh, here by local craftsmen simply took my door measurements, came over and looked at it and said, I want something that'll do just exactly this. It's going to, it's going to be four or three panels, or four panels on the bottom and then a large panel at the top. So all the lines match the door. Uh, and then uh, I discovered several years after I did that, and then I also had a screen done the same way. So I had two doors. I'm tracing, carrying these window doors, you know, putting them in. Well, if I'd really thought and waited about two years, we could have gotten a combination. You could now have that done combination. Four, four little panels that just drop in for screens, you know, or the glass comes out like all, all the rest of them. So it, uh, there are crafts people around who will do that for you. Uh, and you can do one door with, uh, with both screen and, and storm, uh, you know, interchangeable parts. Yeah. It does a fantastic job of duplicating mm -hmm. existing doors. Those guys, yeah, Pinecrest are very good. They are top quality people to work with. In uh, Cedar Rapids, Hardwood Technologies also is a great place to start if you're concerned about trying to find parts and yeah. materials and styles and fashions that you need to do. Hella also does, by the way, wood doors as well as as well as plaid. So, yeah, can, you, can you make a uh, an old house, I don't think you can do it. I tried. <laughs> Lord knows I tried. And you don't but. run and start copying up everything that, with a house that's breathed up in a year is, doesn't affect the floor joints? I, I just haven't seen an old house that, uh, <laughs> that, that was too tight. Uh, at least I didn't think so at the time. Um, but, you know, you, yeah, the house has got to breathe. And remember, as has been pointed out to you, the moisture comes from the, from the inside out. It's working out, not out, yeah, outside in. Uh, and once you, you know, really accommodate that, then you've got to, just so there's some air moving, uh, it moves through the house, and there's an amazing amount of, uh, of air. I mean, I, it just moves through a house, right? So, you want to make any comments on that? Can, can an old house be made too tight? Uh, I've never seen one. Not yours. <laughs> never mind. No, no, no. I mean... The average old house that doesn't have the windows clogged and everything, we had a blow, one of those blower door tests done in our house out in the country. Mm -hmm. And we had an error exchange rate of about eight uh, air changes per hour, which means a, the breeze was coming at 40 and it was 20 when it went through the house. Oh. And then we, we cut it with every imaginable technique possible, I think we cut it down to about three. And what the modern houses we're doing today, uh, we cut it down to under a quarter of inch per hour, but when you get down that low, then you actually have to use heat exchangers and some right. other methods. For Add moisture. Yeah. yeah.